Hi, I'm Bob Welds, and this is a first look at trigonometry. To keep it simple, we're only going to talk about a thing called the sine of an angle today. Later, you'll see other trig functions, but really, if you understand how the sine works, you'll get the others pretty easily. Okay, let's look at this right triangle. You see that it has a 30 degree angle in one corner, the side opposite of the 30 degree angle is 1 meter long, and the hypotenuse is 2 meters long. Remember that the hypotenuse is the longest side of a right triangle. Let's compare the size of this opposite side to the hypotenuse by dividing 1 by 2 and see what we get. 1 divided by 2 equals 0. 0.5. Um, well, that was easy, so what's the big deal? The deal is that we just found the sine of 30 degrees. The sine of 30 degrees is one half. We write it like this. Here, let's do it again. This right triangle has a height of 4 meters and a hypotenuse of 8 meters. The sine of 30 degrees is 4 divided by 8. 4 divided by 8 reduces to one half. Again, the sine of 30 degrees is one half or 0.5. You see, it doesn't matter how big the triangle is, 30 degrees always has a sine of 0.5. Any 30 degree right triangle has a hypotenuse that is exactly twice as long as the opposite side. Here, you can Google it. Type sine of 30 degrees and see what you get. Be sure to type degrees or you'll get something else. The sine of an angle tells us the answer to the division problem we get when we put the opposite side, that is the side across from the angle, over the hypotenuse. You might be wondering what good it is to know that ratio since we already know how to divide 1 by 2 or 4 by 8. Let's take a closer look. Here is another triangle, but with the same 30 degree angle in the corner. This time, we know the length of the hypotenuse and the angle, but we don't know the opposite side. Look at what we could do if we knew the sine of the angle. Instead of saying sine of 30 degrees, we could say 0.5, because 0.5 is the sine of 30 degrees. And instead of saying hypotenuse, we could say 14, because that's how long the hypotenuse is. Now, instead of using that silly question mark, we could call the length of the opposite side A, and voila, we have an algebra problem instead of a trigonometry problem. Here's how we could solve the algebra part. Multiply both sides by 14. On the left, we see 14 times 0.5 equals 7. And on the right side, 14s cancel each other out. And look, A equals 7. Now that's something we couldn't have done if we didn't know this little bit of trigonometry. Let's see how useful the sine of other angles can be. We know what the sine of 30 is, but with our calculator, we can find the sine of any angle. Let's try to find the length of the hypotenuse of this triangle. The angle is 25 degrees, and the side opposite of the angle is 1.69 meters long. First, write down what we know. The sine of 25 degrees is equal to the opposite side, 1.69, over the hypotenuse. Now, we need the sine of 25 degrees. This time, I'll use my calculator instead of Google. First, we'll turn it to scientific mode. Then I'll be sure it knows to use degrees. Now, I'll type 25 and hit the sign button. Now, different calculators may have you hit the sign key first, so check your answers to make sure that you're doing what your calculator expects. I got 0.4226182261 and it keeps going. We only need the first few decimal places of that. So, instead of saying sine of 25 degrees here, we'll say 0.4226. Here, I'll rewrite our equation. Now, it's an algebra problem. We need to isolate the hypotenuse to see what its value is. I'm going to call it C to keep things neat and clean. I'll multiply both sides by C. The C's cancel out on the right. And now I'll divide both sides by 0.4226. This leaves C on the left and a little division problem on the right. 
we use our calculator to type 1.690 divided by 0.4226 and we get something just a smidgen over 3.99 a number very close to 4 meters now we've seen that we can use the sine of an angle to find the sides of a triangle and you can use the opposite side and the hypotenuse to find the sine of the angle. What if you knew the sine of an angle, but not the angle itself? Well, there's a trick for that. Let me show you. Here, we have another right triangle. The side opposite of our angle is 2.5 meters long, and the hypotenuse is 3.889 meters long. You may be able to see right away that we could find the sine of the angle just like we did before. Remember, we put 2.5 over 3.889. Now, since a fraction is just a division problem, we'll divide 2.5 by 3.889. That gives us 0.64283. So, just like before, we know what the sine of the angle is, only we don't know what the angle itself is. To find the angle when we know the sine of the angle, we just run the sine function in reverse. And that's called taking the arc sine or the inverse sine. You'll see it on your calculator as a sine with a negative 1 exponent, or you may even see it spelled out as a sine or arc sine or inverse sine. A lot of the time, it's the same button as the sine button, but you push another button to enable it. I'll do it with this little calculator so you can see. I'll type 0.64284 and push this little button you'll see that my sine key has turned into an inverse sine key. Now, when I press the inverse sine button, I get an angle. Isn't that the cat's pajamas? My angle is just a tiny bit more than 40 degrees. I'll round it off to the nearest tenth of a degree. Here's the original problem so you can remember what we were solving. We knew the side opposite of the angle was 2.5 meters long, and we knew the hypotenuse was 3.889 meters long. We wanted to know the angle. First, we found the sine of the angle, opposite over hypotenuse, 2.5 over 3.889. We divided and found the sine of the angle was 0.64283. Then, we used our new trick, the inverse sine, to find the angle was very close to 40 degrees. I just think that's great. This is going to be very useful. Okay. Let's work some problems. I'm going to give you a problem where you find the missing opposite side first. When you see Sparky's pause, pause the video and try to fill in the blanks in the equation. You don't need to solve it yet. Just fill in the blanks with what you see on the diagram. Okay, there are the blanks filled in. The sine of 30 degrees is equal to A over 15. A is the opposite side, and 15 is the hypotenuse. The sine of an angle is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Now, let's see if we can turn the trig problem into an ordinary algebra problem. Let's see. Instead of saying sine of 30 degrees, what could we say? Use a calculator to find the sine of 30 degrees. Even if you know what it is, this way you can be sure your calculator is set up correctly. Pause while you calculate. Okay, I know you probably remembered that the sine of 30 degrees is 0.5, but hopefully you tried it on your calculator. It's really important that you know how to get the sine of an angle. Now we have just a little algebra problem on our hands. See if you can solve for A. A is equal to 7.5. If you were able to solve it by looking at it, let me encourage you to go through the algebra steps to get good at them. Here, we'll multiply both sides by 15 to get rid of that fraction. Then we see that 15 times 0.5 is equal to 7.5, and that's our answer. Let's do one more. Let's do one where we find the angle by using the opposite side and the hypotenuse. Let's remember that if we know the opposite side and the hypotenuse, we can find the sine of the angle. Let's do that first. Pause the video and see if you can fill in the blanks. Then find the sine of the unknown angle by dividing.
That's right. One on top, 4.810 on the bottom. That means the sine of this angle is 0 0.2079. Now for the second part. Let's use the arc sine to find what the angle is. Remember, we know that the sine of the angle is 0 0.2079. Okay, pause the video and be sure you know how to find the angle using the sine of the angle. Fill in the blanks and do the calculations on your calculator. Okay, I got an answer that was ridiculously close to 12. I'm going to round it off to the nearest tenth of a degree. So, 12 degrees. Well, that's our first look at trigonometry. I hope that you can see how useful it is to find the angles from those links and links from the angles. There's a lot more to cover, but if you understand how the sine and inverse sine work, you're on your way to using some very useful tools. I'm Bob Welds, and these are Weld Notes.